Okay. And we'll have to make presenters. They want to share. Okay. Okay. Sure. Bob. Welcome everyone to this meeting of the Community Preservation Act Committee on June 6th, 2024. Uh, I am calling the meeting to order at 6.05 p.m. We're meeting remotely via Zoom, uh, according to the decision of Tony Amherst, which is permitted by the state. Uh, this meeting is being recorded and will appear on the Town of Amherst uh, CPA website. I'm going to call on committee members now so that we all know that uh, we can hear you and that you can be heard. Uh, I'm Sam McLeod. I'll try to go as I see people uh, on the screen. Katie. Here. Tim. Present. Matt. Here. David. Here. Michelle. Here. Doug. Present. Bob. Here. Robin. Here. I believe that is everyone. So very good. Uh, <clears throat> we do have to have a minute taker for every meeting. I know it's late in our annual cycle, so uh, I will volunteer to take minutes for this meeting. Um, <clears throat> We've called this meeting to order uh, both because it was a timely meeting for us to wrap up the uh, cycle for fiscal year 2025, but also because we received a request recommendation referral from the town council regarding uh, a request from the school committee on the track and field project. Uh, information has been provided to committee members and in the packet. Uh, and I'm going to proceed with the uh, agenda. The first item on the agenda is public comment. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and call on anyone who's participating who wishes to have a public comment. It can be on any topic. Uh, and if you're able to please raise your hand. If for some reason that doesn't work, seek to communicate us via chat or call in. Uh, and I'll try to be patient to allow everyone the opportunity to speak. Uh, I see a hand raised currently from Tony Cunningham. Uh, Tony, I would like to invite you to uh, speak publicly. Uh, we don't have the cameras for the those attending uh, to be seen on screen. I did communicate with Holly. We're going to seek to enable that if we're able to come the pending cycle for fiscal year 2026, starting in the fall. Uh, Tony, so please uh, proceed uh, with whatever your public comment is. Thank you, uh, Tony Cunningham at District One. I'm just calling in in support of the request to lift the restrictions on the CPA allocation of $800,000 for the high school track and field project. I think the plan to pursue option 1D is a good one where the interior field is fully reconstructed as opposed to just rejuvenated uh, with new drainage and new sod on top. So thank you. Thank you, Tony, uh, for joining us and appreciate your comments. Again, anyone who's in attendance uh, and wishes to make a comment, uh, please raise your hand so that uh, we can see you. Uh, another hand raised, uh, Maria Kapicki. Maria, if you can hear me, uh, you're welcome to uh, join us and make a comment. Thanks so much, Sam. And uh, thank you to the CPA committee for meeting uh, about this to, to entertain the, the question from the school department. I uh, also support lifting the restrictions uh, that are in place on the, the current money for the track and field project and hope that you will vote favorably on that. Um, it would, I think this is a time that we should go in, even though the there is an option 1B on the table, I think 1D is far superior. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you guys will, will lift the restrictions to allow that to happen. Thank you, Maria. Appreciate your joining us and sharing your thoughts. Uh, I see a, a few other folks in the audience. I'd like to invite anyone who wishes to speak to do so. 
Uh, if you wish to make a comment, please raise your hand. I will wait uh, another minute. I don't see any hands here, but I don't want to uh, rush to prevent anyone from speaking. So I'm going to pause quietly uh, and we'll see if anyone sees. I believe if you are on your phone, you hit nine to raise your hand, just in case somebody's on their phone versus computer. Press number nine. Is that what you I said? I believe that's it. Yeah. Very good. Thank I, you. I believe it's star nine. Star nine. Thank you, Doug. Star nine. So anyone who's on their phone, press star nine if you wish to make a comment. Doesn't look like we have anybody else, so we can proceed. I'm not seeing anyone. Uh, so I'm going to uh, end the public comment portion of the meeting and proceed to the next item on the agenda, which is approve any outstanding minutes. Now, we have three different sets of minutes that had yet to be approved from last fall's cycle, and the materials have been provided to all members. So I'd like to take them one at a time. Uh, I don't know who has had the opportunity to review them or not, but the first set of minutes, uh, we might as well go uh, by the calendar, is November 9th, 2023, uh, submitted by Robin. Uh, and I'd like to invite any committee members who have any suggested edits to the comments to raise their hand. I see Michelle, you have your hand low, uh, raised. I'd like to call on you. Thanks, Sam. Um, just my only comment is that my name is spelled wrong throughout it. One E. Okay. That's all. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Uh, hopefully that can be done via uh, widespread uh, edits. Find and search. Uh, anyone else have any comments on the minutes of November 9th? Matt. Yeah, I guess it's somewhat minor, but the, the the URL for the recording is not the correct URL. And also in the uh, election of chair and vice chair, there's triple X's as to who um, moved to nominate and who seconded. Right. So those should probably be. Yes, it was moved by... Uh... David and seconded by Michelle. I have that same edit here. Uh, so thank you. Um, so the anyway, URL is, is to a different meeting. Okay, that's good to know. Any other comments related to the minutes of November 9th? I have comments in that uh, the votes affiliated with the election of chair and vice chair. The vote totals were in fact eight in favor, zero against, and one abstain for each of those two votes, motions that took place. Um, I don't believe I have any other edits requested for the meeting. Uh, I'd like to ask committee members again if they have any other further edits uh, requested to wow. minutes of November 9th. Not seeing anyone. I'd like to, uh, does anyone like to make a motion then to uh, approve these minutes with the edits? So moved. Uh, who was that? Doug. Uh, Doug, thank you. Is there a second? A second. Second from Michelle. So we have a motion on the table, a second to approve the minutes of November 9th, 2023, as with the associated edits. So I'd like to call on members to vote uh, with a roll call vote if it's required. I'll say uh, aye, and I'll call on your members. Tim. Aye. Katie. I'm going to abstain. David. Aye. Bob. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Doug. Aye. Matt? Aye. Robin? Aye. Did I miss anyone? So I believe the motion passes 
seven in favor and eight in favor and one abstention. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, next set of minutes moving right along. We're provided for December 14th, 2023, uh, submitted by uh, Matt. Uh, does anyone have any comments that they wish to make on those minutes? Or any suggested edits? Not seeing any hands raised. I looked through the minutes and I did not find a single edit that I felt was worth making. Uh, Matt, you're welcome to do the minutes every time if you'd like. <laughs> Does anyone else have any uh, comments? I'm not seeing any hands, so I'd like to go ahead. Would anyone like to make a motion? Regarding, regarding so moved. The Is there a second? Second. So we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes as draft minutes have submitted for December 14th, 2023. I'm going to call on committee members uh, and please uh, speak so that we can hear you regarding your vote. I'll start by saying aye. Uh, Tim? Aye. Matt? Aye. Katie? Aye. David? Aye. Doug? Aye. Bob? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Robin? Aye. So the motion passes nine in favor, uh, zero opposed, zero abstentions. Thank you. Moving right along, uh, the last set of minutes that uh, we had yet to address from last year were December 21st, 2023. Draft minutes were submitted in our packet uh, as entered by Michelle. Uh, I found two minor edits that I'll reference here. One was that uh, we should add the name of the person who submitted the minutes, submitted by Michelle at the end. And there was an abbreviation of whoever was making comments, their initials throughout, uh, which is very useful. And I did see uh, a few referencing DZ for David Zomack, but I did not see the DZ after his name, where the names appear at the start. So that would be my one suggestion that we add DZ since it's referred to in the minutes. Uh, <clears throat> do any committee members have any additional edits or comments related to uh, these minutes? Please raise your hand if you do. Not seeing any hands raised. I can't see you on my screen at present, Robin. If you have something to say, please speak up. Um, no, no comment. So would anyone like to make a motion regarding the minutes of December 21st? So moved. Moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, who was the second? Tim. Tim, okay. So we have a motion to and a second to approve the minutes of December 21st, 2023. Again, voice vote, proceed with your names. Uh, roll call, please speak up. I will vote aye, Tim. Aye. Matt. Aye. Katie. Aye. David. Aye. Doug. Aye. Bob. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Robin. Aye. Okay, so the motion passes nine to zero. Uh, that went quicker than, uh, better than I had hoped. We just got three, three sets of minutes, just like that. Thank you all for uh, submitting these minutes and uh, getting them to us in time for this meeting. I appreciate it. Uh, this is likely to be our last meeting of this cycle. So I think it's important that we address these administrative issues. Um, proceeding right along, the next item on our agenda is financial update, if or as available. Uh, Holly, would you 
Do you have anything to communicate to us? Um, no, I have not prepared any financial updates. This um, meeting has no financial implications whatsoever. It's just lifting a restriction on a previously approved. We're not voting anything new. There's no new numbers. Uh, thank you, Holly. So there's no financial update to share. <clears throat> so I'd like to... Uh, um, next item. Excuse me. Although I, I would like to add something in this... Um, I guess this falls under the um, topics not anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know that there was an email that I sent out earlier today with an invitation to a um, rededication of the church bell steeple at the South Congregational Church. It is a project that was funded with CPA funds and they have extended the invitation to the entire CPA committee if anybody would like to attend. I did just send that information out to everybody this afternoon, just received it, and I just wanted to make sure that everybody saw that. And that's all I have, thank you. And that's on July 6th. July 6th. At the South Church. Thank you for uh, bringing that up, Holly. They've actually made quite good progress on that. If you drive by there, you can see the cranes and the in-process uh, reassembling of newly constructed steeple uh, sections. <clears throat> so uh, the next item on the agenda is the presentation of the uh, track and field project options. Um, I do see uh, from so can you, Dave, can you tell me, uh, it is the Kevin Fusler and whom else should I be bringing in? Is that it? Dave, you're muted. If you could also bring in Bob Parent from the town team, that would be helpful, Holly. And Sam, I do have some intro remarks because... Um, sure. The superintendent, the acting superintendent, is uh, has a conflict and won't be able to make it. Uh, well, please proceed, Dave. Thank you. Just for me. Just waiting for Bob here. Tried to promote him to panelist. Bob, you should see a pop up on your screen. You just have to click yes. Looks like uh, they're both they're both in the meeting. So, Dave, uh, if you'd like to make some comments to commence, that'd be great. Great, I will be uh, brief. Thanks so much uh, for having us tonight. Thank you for calling the meeting. We really appreciate it. Um, okay. I'm here to some degree, uh, a little bit last minute. Uh, the superintendent, Doug Slaughter, the acting superintendent, uh, had a last minute conflict and isn't able to be here. So. I'm going to just uh, shoot from the hip here with a few intro comments. I'm joined here by Kevin uh, from our, our consulting team at SLR and Bob Parent, uh, who is a, a town staffer. Uh, uh, so we're, we're well represented here with, with engineering and deep, deep uh, uh, background in uh, project management and uh, design. Um, um, We've been working with, uh, for months, uh, the team working with SLR uh, to really, um, to sharpen our pencil on the track and field project. I think many of you know, this is uh, a project that's been uh, in the making for a number of years. Um, we are feel like we've made tremendous progress with SLR on the team recently, and I'm gonna leave most of the details to Kevin. Um, but we are at a point where we think uh, we have uh, three very, very important and, and viable options for the track and field project. Um, we The reason this is here before you is this was referred to the CPAC by the town council. Um, and the town council is asking CPAC to consider the two restrictions that were placed on the $800,000 um, um, uh, 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 funding that uh, was to be borrowed for this project. Those restrictions had to do with essentially requiring a north-south orientation and having a field that had artificial turf, that has artificial turf. 
We have moved away given uh, community concern about artificial turf and its impact on the environment. Some months ago, our team moved away from artificial turf and we are now presenting to you and to the town council and of course the regional school committee with three options uh, that include um, natural grass, if you will. Um, there are two options for an east-west orientation, and there's one option for a north-south uh, option. All three options have eight-lane tracks, and again, I'll let Kevin go into more detail on all of those. We're also here because we've met twice with the regional school committee, had very uh, significant and very uh, uh, um, fruitful conversations with the school committee. Uh, there is strong support. Um, I don't speak for the school committee, but I was at both of those meetings, and I think it is fair to say there is strong support for moving forward on this project. We all know that we've been without a track uh, for a number of years, and um, the field in the middle of the track uh, needs improvements. So I think with that, I'll turn it over to Kevin. Uh, Bob is here to answer other questions uh, from the Amherst side, and we look forward to kind of a conversation with you after Bob, um, Kevin has finished his presentation. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Kevin Fusilier. I'm a principal landscape architect with SLR. Uh, I lead our athletic facility division. Uh, I've been there for about 18 years and primarily focus on athletics. Um, if you don't mind, I'll share my screen. I have a brief presentation to go through the process that has brought us to this point and uh, where we go from here. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Please uh, feel free to take as much time as you would like. Uh, we're all interested in the project and anything you have to say with us. Yeah, and feel and free to interrupt me with any questions. I, I find the questions are the most uh, the best part of this process. Great. Um, all right. Can everyone see my screen in the presentation? Yep. Yeah, okay, good. So we'll just jump through. I already introduced myself. <clears throat> so um, where we are today, um, we were retained by the school to for six phases of this project. Um, we're about 90, 95% complete with phase one site evaluation. So we did topographic survey of the site. Uh, we delineated wetlands that are located to the north of the athletic fields at the high school campus. We took soil samples and sent those to labs for uh, testing for um, various components, but uh, mainly components of concern, um, uh, PFAS, PHH, uh, AH, uh, arsenic, heavy metals, our typical protocol, um, no, thinking that potentially we'd have to remove and dispose the soils offsite. We completed a geotechnical investigation of both the track area itself, the existing track, and also the potential for future uh, light pole locations. We began the, our analysis of the Tanbrook culvert that runs under the majority of the project site. And the only piece of the uh, site investigation that we haven't completed yet, but we will soon, <clears throat> is digging a series of shallow test pits within the field within the track and within the grassed area uh, if we were to choose to go reorient the track. Um, and this tells us, uh, that information would tell us depth of topsoil, volume of topsoil, and also the uh, the permeability of the soils beneath. So that information aids in the design of not only the track, but the, uh, the drainage system and the fields. We uh, postponed that just to get through the spring sports season. We didn't want to go digging holes in fields that uh, games would be played on, even though they get restored back to uh, pretty much their original condition. We just didn't see a need to go disturb the area. So we will schedule those in the uh, upcoming weeks and uh, we'll be complete with the phase one site evaluation. What I'll be showing you in a moment is where we're at with phase two preliminary design. Um, we started this process and I think when we went to the first school committee meeting, we had 11 options. Um, we, after that meeting, we received really good feedback. We went back to sharpened our pencils, refined our designs. And what we'll show you tonight is what we showed the building of uh, the school committee at the last meeting. And that's down from 11 to three options. We are sort of in a holding pattern now to move forward until a, a, one of the three options is chosen. Um, but we have factored that into our overall schedule. <clears throat> So the development of options, what I'll present tonight is 
option 1B, option 1D, and 3C. So you're missing, you know, uh, eight of those original 11, but those were the A's and the C's and the, the various other combinations, option two. Uh, but option one is to retain the existing track location, same footprint, but we would expand it to, uh, from six lane to eight lane in both the oval and the straight uh, the straightaways, the sprinting areas. We would renovate the existing grass fields. So when I say renovate, we're not ripping out the entire field and its subsurface drainage, but we are stripping the grass. We are amending the soils, uh, decompacting them regrading, laser grading the field and putting down sod. Um, and that uh, carried a budget, a current budget of $1.7 million. <clears throat> Option 1D is the same improvements to the track, a fully reconstructed track, but expanded to eight lanes. The grass field though would be fully ripped out in its entirety. It's subsurface drainage system. It'd be replaced with a whole new drainage system, enhanced drainage system. Uh, the entire root zone for the uh, grass field would be amended, uh, reconstructed, sodded field, new irrigation. We would do an LED retrofit to the existing lighting system. Uh, both option 1B and 1D require a relocation of two poles, but under 1B we would uh, only enhance two poles to LED. The rest would remain metal halide as currently exists, but under 1D we would do a full new LED system. And that project uh, option carries uh, a budget of $3.4 million. And then option 3C would be to reorient the track into a north-south uh, orientation. Uh, it would be utilizing the topography of the site and it would be built up against the, uh, the hillside on the east side. Um, fully new eight-lane running track. It would be a slightly a different configuration track. Um, it'd be a slightly wider track, which would accommodate a larger field footprint within. That would also be a fully reconstructed, a full, brand new field, all new drainage, all the amendments that we talked about before, uh, brand new lighting, LED lighting system. And then we would also um, restore the area to the west of this track uh, and create a new, a secondary multi-purpose grass field where the, the track used to be. Uh, and that carries a, a cost of uh, $4,230,000. So just to go through these options again with a picture, uh, this shows the eight-lane running track in its current uh, current orientation, reconstruction of the all the track areas and vent areas, and then that rejuvenated or renovated grass field. We provided our detailed breakdowns. I won't go into that in detail, but you can uh, feel free to look through that. Uh, this picture looks the same for 1D, but as I mentioned here, we would be doing a full reconstruction of the field along with a uh, full renovation of the field lighting, converting it to LED. Uh, what I forgot to mention under all of these is that we are adding um, ADA access and sidewalk improvements. Uh, the field itself would be ADA accessible. And there would be also enhanced drop-off area along Mattoon Street. That's common for all three options. And then option 3C is the uh, drastically different option where we're reorienting orienting the field. Uh, we're making it what is an IAAF or an Olympic configuration track, which really accommodates just a larger soccer field footprint, which all other sports can fit into. Uh, this is a new four-pole LED system. We would be constructing a, a bleacher pad for future bleachers. Uh, just the pad is carried in the budget at the moment, uh, not any bleacher structures. Uh, relocated jumping events, uh, relocated shop put area, and then reshaping and reconstructing the area to the west to accommodate another full-size multi-purpose grass field. And so project schedule, uh, as I mentioned, the site investigations, the only thing waiting is the test pits after the conclusion of the spring season. I think we're given the go ahead to start any time after next week. We'll probably push that one additional week, uh, just wait for school to be out, uh, just so we're not in anyone's way. Uh, we have started preliminary design. We, these designs that you see have been put on the uh, topographic survey that we prepared. 
they're to scale, they're, they're ready to be advanced to uh, a more detailed level of design that would be suitable for regulatory permitting. Uh, permitting we anticipate would uh, happen from July through October. Uh, that's a little bit generous, but we're, we're thinking at least a three month period to get through uh, the, the town's land use process and the various committees that we have to uh, present to. Our goal is to be ready for final design and bidding. Uh, final design would begin at the uh, onset of <clears throat> receiving approvals from all the various agencies um, that we would uh, advance final design, make it construction bid ready, and that we would have a probably about a two month window where we put it out to bid and award that bid, um, hopefully by early 2025. And then the whole plan is to be construction ready at the end of next school year and uh, the construction would run the entire summer. So we'd be at substantial completion, we hope by the end of August, 2025. But all this really moving forward is dependent on a selection of one of the options presented. That concludes my presentation. I can stop sharing or I can go back to any slide if anyone wants to discuss one and one or many specifically. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, before I call on committee members, if they have questions, would you like to uh, your colleague uh, in the from the town and the design, Bob, do you have anything you'd like to add to what uh, Kevin has said here or, or is it fine for us to go ahead with questions? Definitely fine. Kevin's done a fine job. Okay. So feel uh, free. Thank you uh, both. Uh, and thank you, Kevin. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call on committee members. Uh, although right before I do that, I see that Dave Zomack has his hand up. I think it's uh, appropriate given Dave's involvement in this to call on him first. All right, go ahead, Dave. Yeah, I just want to thank Kevin for that, that uh, presentation, very oh. succinct. And uh, it lays out um, how far we've come since a uh, year, year and a half ago. I did just want to kind of re refocus or focus um, a little bit on on what is needed tonight, and really what is needed is is a focus on the two restrictions that came with your recommendation to the council. And just a reminder, those were turf that 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 uh, you uh, the CPAC supported a turf field, which as I've said before, we've moved away from, and two. Um, that uh, you recommended to the council that this be a north-south orientation only. And I think what's key is from a staff standpoint, from a project standpoint, um, we need to, we are asking for some flexibility in whether this ends up to be a north-south or an east-west, we don't know that yet. And some of that will obviously be based on budgets. And so tonight we're not really here to vote on option one, two, or three, but to give us the flexibility, uh, obviously turf is off. It's a natural grass field uh, in either scenario, uh, any of the three, but we really need that flexibility to consider north-south if the budget allows, um, but to go east-west if we don't have the budget to uh, additional funding to go north-south. So. I just wanted to kind of frame that. And I think your recommendation uh, will be heard by the finance committee and ultimately the town council. And of course, will um, the town council, I think, uh, working with the regional school committee will decide on what the school and with the town support can afford. So I hope that was clear. I appreciate your sharing with us your perspective as the uh, proponents of the the project, uh, Dave, and uh, for the committee members, uh, <clears throat> four of our committee members were present in June of 2022 when uh, the committee originally made the recommendation, which was approved for the 800,000. Uh, there was a great deal of discussion at that time, and there was strong, uh, strong support, uh, unanimous support for the North South field as presented at that meeting, as well as um, for the presented turf, uh, artificial turf components. Uh, Dave has accurately described, from my perspective, the two elements of consideration regarding restrictions. One is, is there 
Uh, one is the north-south orientation, which existed with option three at that time, and the other is the uh, artificial turf that was a component of option three at that time. As a committee, of course, CPA funds cannot be used for artificial turf. It was simply one of the restrictions that existed with our recommendation. I see our uh, task as a committee here to understand the options as presented by uh, the uh, by Kevin and uh, the applicant group uh, and then you know ask questions related to that and then to discuss uh, as a committee what we think is the best route forward uh, based on our uh, motivations as a committee. I'm sure uh, we all have opinions on that and we'll certainly have an opportunity to uh, share our opinions, but for the moment, uh, we do have the uh, presenters here and the uh, uh, consultants. So I'd like to open up, as I said before, to the committee. Uh, and Matt, you've had your hand up uh, patiently waiting, so I'd like to call on you, Matt. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Sam. So I have additional questions for Dave, but I'll probably focus my questions now for Kevin. So my first question in option um, 1D, uh, what's the rationale for um, include upgrading all of the light towers? And then secondly, my second question is in option 3C, um, in the town council that meeting, there was a question as to whether the restored field was going to be good enough. And I guess, uh, I guess my question specifically is uh, whether the restored field in option 3C would be as good as or better than the part of the field that's being removed, being covered by a track in option 3C. So those are two questions. All right. So for option number 1D, um, the reason for all LED was just for uh, efficiency. Uh, it's the newest technology out there. Uh, it's cost effective if you have all LED lighting. Um, and we would go from a six pole system down to a four pole system uh, to really get the benefit of LED. You actually make the lights taller. Um, since these light poles went in, wind co uh, building code has changed uh, in because of wind speed and we couldn't reuse the existing poles in their locations to make an LED system effective. So there's an upcharge to go rather than move two poles and retrofit them uh, that we would do all four new poles with LED technology. So that's the difference between the 1B and 1D. Um, and then please uh, repeat your question, the second question about 3C. It's, it's related to um, when you rotate the track, you lose some of an old field, but then you say you're going to regenerate a new field. So will the new field be as good as or better than what was covered by the track? I think it will be better. Yeah, it definitely will be better. Um, we're not putting, you know, we're not building that field. That secondary field is a high performance field, um, but with uh, the right amendments to the soil, uniformity throughout the soil, uh, we may, you know, we haven't gotten that far in the detailed design of that secondary field. There may be opportunity to retain some of that under drainage that exists under the track right now, um, but it will be a level laser graded field with amended, uh, better draining soil. So uh, we definitely believe that it will be a, a, a very good field and better than what's there. Thank you. Uh, Michelle. Thanks. Um Question for Kevin. Currently, is there still a playable field to the east, northeast of that field? With the reorientation? Just as is currently. As, as is, the, the fields to the north of the track would more or less be the same. We're encroaching a little because we're adding two lanes to the track. So we're pushing north a little bit. But those uh, it's it wouldn't encroach into the full, which is a little to the northeast. There's a full playing field there. There's some practice fields to the Northwest that they would move a few feet into, but it wouldn't be, I, 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 those fields would still function as is. Okay. Um, and just to chime in, I'm I'm okay with a rescinding those requirements, although it's, you know, too bad that we'd lose orientation. And anecdotally, 
like 25 to 30 years ago, the joke on those fields, which I spent a lot of time in, is that they installed the drainage system upside down. <laughs> so it's been a problem for a really long time. And I'm, I'm a fan of at least option 1D. Thanks. That's good to know. And that's the first time I've heard about upside down drainage. But I, I think I know what you mean, though, when that can happen. Uh, uh, Tim. Yes, uh, my recollection when we looked at this before was the north-south orientation and our recommendation, therefore, was consistent with the long-range plan for that entire complex. And that's in great part why we put the restriction, restriction on the north-south, because we felt it should be part of an overall uh, long-range plan. Where are we on that long-range plan? Not sure if Kevin is. I don't know who can answer that. In that that would, um, sounds like it would be a question for uh, Dave, uh, or for our committee, perhaps, who has influence over what the outcome might be here. <clears throat> Dave, would you like to comment? Sure. Um, so, um, I guess the short answer is this: is uh, if we look back on the Weston and Sampson plan, this was really phase one of that plan. Is is a new track and a new track and multi-purpose field um, north of Mattoon Street. The second phase was really to take a look at the area around War Memorial Pool, and we're already well underway with that uh, work. Uh, Amy Rusecki from our Department of Public Works, Bob Parent, who was on this call, and many others are already working with a consultant to look at the War Memorial Pool bathhouse and the area around the War Memorial Pool, which we all know is um, pretty tired. So um, this was phase one, get a new track because it was such a high priority, get a new field, high performing field, turf or grass. And the, the, the next phase down the road, according to the Weston Sampson plan, and the preference was for north-south orientation, was someday to move the softball field, the varsity softball field, also used by the community, to the western edge of um, the area that we're talking about here today. But again, that's some right. years down the road. I think well, we, sorry, we, we got our hands full with what's what's ahead of us here. Yeah, part of my question was, I believe my recollection back when we made that restriction was we were not supportive of uh, helping out the track in its current position, if the town was going to move to the long range plan, it would be quote wasted money because the long range plan calls for the north south. So options one, whatever they are, one B and D now replace it in its existing place. And if we then proceed with a long range plan, we are going to have to at some point reorient it, or is that not part of the equation? I mean, I can try to answer that as well, Sam. Okay, I, think, I mean, that's... I, I think, Tim, you've kind of captured the, the gravity and the importance of, you know, today's discussion, the discussion with the Finance Committee and the discussion with the, uh, subsequently with the Council, I, I believe that's on the 17th of June. I mean, this is kind of a once in a generation or more decision we're making is the north-south orientation or the east-west orientation. Um, previously, as you said, CPAC supported the north-south orientation. However, we have to be realistic, and that's one of the reasons why we're here tonight, um, is we have to be realistic. Do we have the money? Can we find the money? Can we put the budget together? The numbers are pretty, pretty straightforward. 1.7 million for the first uh, option. 3.4 million for the second option and 4.2 for the third option. We believe it with the $800,000 from CPAC and $900,000 from free cash, we can get to the $3.4 million option. However, that is an east-west orientation. Um, you get your eight lane track, you don't get the east-west orientation and you don't get a field to the west. We don't get a field to the west. The only option that gets us a north-south orientation, an eight-lane track, 
and a, a new field, as Kevin outlined, a uh, rejuvenated field to the west is the 4.2. However, um, it's a bit of a stretch budgetarily to get there. We're about seven seven dollars $750,000 short. I think there are members of the school committee, there are members of the town council that expressed an interest to see if we can reach that far um, to get there because it is such an important uh, decision. If we go east-west, I I think the reality is we we as a community are unlikely to, we will not reorient the field after spending three and a half million dollars, you know, um, for a very, very long time. So that's just the reality. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dave. Thank you, Tim. All right, Doug. Thank you, Sam. Um, and Tim's first, Tim's question took care of my first question, which, uh, I now understand that, in fact, the realization of the long-term plan depends on the track to be reoriented. So that being the case, I guess uh, I guess I want to just ask, I guess it's Kevin mostly, uh, about uh, a variant on your 3C, which would be more affordable, uh, because at the moment, we don't have a track. It's 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 there, but it's unusable. So, is there an opportunity to have a less expensive reorientation plan, where you actually reorient the field that's inside the track, put in the lights maybe, but don't build the track? And then you everything you've spent is setting you up for the long-term realization of the vision. And you know, it's probably a more affordable option than uh, what you've presented. Because it seems like the only thing you're the only, you know, the only north-south option right now is the most expensive. Uh, I guess is that an option or the opposite to where just just build the track and don't build the field inside of it. Well, I'll say to to that we you know when exploring these options we had about we had about three options for each configuration and we talked about six lane ovals, uh, eight lane oval or six lane ovals with eight lane straights, um, but we were directed to you know the eight. All, all the way around was what was desired. Um, we have talked about cost saving options uh, in maybe phasing where we put in infrastructure for lighting, empty conduit, pole boxes, maybe light pole foundations, but we don't actually purchase and install the lights right away. Um, there's a few hundred thousand dollars or at least yeah, a couple hundred thousand dollars savings there. Um, the, the sidewalk improvements along Mattoon Street being uh, municipal property and not school property. We talked about potentially taking out that portion from this project and funding it elsewhere, um, which would be another 100,000 plus or minus. Um, it, none of those make up the full 750,000. I think that's the number differential. At no time was there a discussion that no track or no field would be acceptable. Um, that's just the direction we were given. Okay, thank you. I guess it it just seems a little bit uh, disappointing that we the only north south is an all or nothing. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Uh, Matt. Yeah, I just realized I have one short question. One of the features of option three C was that you would make the interior playing field wider and larger. Um, is that also included in um, one D? since you're reconstructing everything, or is the field in 1D the same as 1B? Uh, the field in, in 1D is the same as in 1B. Um, it's it's what's called a fat track. It's, it's, it's slightly wider than your old traditional tracks, which were called equal quadrant. Um, those really can only fit a football field in there or, you know, or a narrower field. Um, so there, it is a fat track that's existing. This one's just slightly larger. Um, it, there's nothing that is really stopping us from exploring that if we were to go with one B or A because we are um, 
you know, in rebuilding it. When we started this process, we didn't know how much of the existing track we could salvage. But now that we've completed our geotechnical investigation, um, unfortunately, there's not too much. That track's in really bad shape overall. Um, so sometimes we can salvage some of the asphalt, um, which I think in the original Weston Sampson's con concepts that they did uh, think reclamation, uh, uh, some kind of milling and paving would be an option. But when we did corings in the track, we just learned that the whole track asphalt oval has to be replaced. That said, we are going to reuse as much of the stone base under it as possible. That's why for these concepts, we kept the configuration uh, exactly the same as is for 1B and 1D. Uh, I think we could explore it and wouldn't change the budget that much if we wanted to shorten and widen the track a little bit to uh, accommodate a slightly larger soccer field within. Thanks. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, Tim. Yes. Um, sorry, I was looking at my phone. I walk my dog over to Amherst College's practice field every day, and I should know this, but I don't. How many lanes are on that track? Uh, let me pull up an aerial. Bear with me. Yeah, I I did too, but I couldn't see the lanes. And yeah. second question would be the UMass track. So Amherst, I'm looking at that right now. That's a it's an eight lane. Oval, it is eight lane. lane sprint. And then okay. I'll zoom over to UMass. Okay, that might, that might be a nine or a ten laner over there. That's a big. Okay, one. well, just with <laughs> curiosity. Okay, that's kind of maybe I don't know if it's immaterial or not, but I just didn't know. So eight lanes is is uh, <clears throat> in a larger track than we currently have, correct? Yes, okay. you currently have a six lane, and it's consistent with so called quote championship tracks or whatever. Yeah, the additional lanes just add for the efficiency of track meets. Okay, um, more athletes at one time, less heat. Yeah. yeah. Did you did you call on me, Sam? I did. Oh, thanks. Um, I was just wondering. I know we were talking about the track, but I'm thinking about the field, and you know the when you're playing a game at like three thirty, and the sun's in your eyes, that that's a thing. And then it's like, okay, in the second half, you switch sides, and all of a sudden, you have a huge advantage, and that's a big thing. And it's kind of weird that Amherst has this oriented field where the sun's in your eyes so i was just wondering has there been any like community input from the students on this or is it just like us sitting around talking about this <laughs> because i have spent many hundreds of hours on it and i can just say it was terrible and it was a thing so um yeah and if anybody has heard anything i'd be interested to know thanks um <clears throat> I certainly heard quite a lot of participation at the original discussions related to this at town council meetings uh, from the students uh, relating to orientation. Uh, the north-south orientation was significant for, I believe, everyone we heard from that I heard from at that time. There, of course, was a separate significant issue related to the discussion, which primarily was the nature of the field, that is to say, grass or artificial turfs. That was the um, area of yeah. significant conflict. But the north-south orientation, uh, in terms of what you asked, student, the students all uh, and former athletes, I've never heard anyone not be in favor of it. That's my understanding as an answer to your question. But Dave, I see that your hand is up. Uh, I'd like to call on Dave Zonak. Sure. Thanks, Sam. I, I think Michelle raises a great point, and and uh, I was trying to think how I would phrase this, but unfortunately, I think the project is now for all of us. The project is now suffering um, from community fatigue. This has been around a very long time. We've been we as a community have been working on this for many many years, um, and I think. Um, Going back a few years, we had very, ex very extremely good attendance at a number of uh, regional school committee meetings, um, town council meetings, CPA meetings, but I think there is fatigue. What I can say, and, and my memory is very clear of those meetings, um, we heard from students, faculty, staff, coaches, community members, parents, we first heard how Poor, what poor condition the fields are in near the regional high school. We also heard an equal 
equally loud voices about how poor the track condition is. And again, we heard from, you know, all sorts of coaches. Um, and we also heard from uh, folks who are uh, official officials about the track and how they, how the track is, you know, we can't use it for a competition any longer. The three issues that came out loud and clear in those meetings were north-south orientation, turf was very strong, and I, the reason was playability. Again, we've moved away from turf for all the reasons we've talked about. And then the last one of the three was an eight-lane track. That came out loud and clear from those athletes, those coaches, those parents, those alumni who participate in track events that that is a must in 2024 for any community our size. Um, it allows for competitions. It also allows the regional schools to host competitions and raise money through fees and um, all of the associated uh, uh, fees that might come with um, hosting competitions. Um, unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna get those teachers, faculty, staff, students at the couple of meetings that are so essential here they're all on tape. They were very spirited. Some of them got very intense, but um, we we pivoted to support for a new track and a new field uh, at this site. So that was my quick summary, if you will. Uh, thank you, Dave. Uh, Matt. Yeah, so to Michelle's question, I think a large justification for the, um, in, in the Western and Sampson study of rotating the track and also you'll see the field is north south also in option 3c a large justification for that was what you said that uh, east west fields are problematic in the fall season because of uh, sun in players eyes um now i sort of have a question for dave now i know dave has talked about us simply being here to remove the restriction but since uh, the 800,000 is actually a debt authorization, I would think that potentially we could change the amount also. I don't know whether town council would be interested in that kind of a situation, but what, is there any reason we couldn't change the amount as well? Um, I would defer to Sam and Holly a little bit on this, but... Um... My understanding of the of the referral from council and also our posting of this meeting yep. was that that was not that was not on the agenda tonight. If if CPAC wanted to send that a, a message to the council to the regional school committee to staff both at the schools and the Town, myself and Doug, uh, Superintendent Slaughter, et cetera, that CPAC would be open to additional funding, we would have to, we collectively would have to come back through the process in the fall and ask for those additional funds. Correct me, Holly or Sam, if I'm wrong, but that's my understanding. I'm uncertain regarding the need for additional meetings related to a debt authorization. Um, because we did have a public meeting at the time uh, regarding the project and the dollar amount was to be determined. I would think it might need to be in the fall, but the concept uh, is an interesting concept that Matt raises, which is uh, getting from point A to point B, meaning if the there's motivation for option C, 3C, uh, you know, how do we get there? Uh, but I'd like to bring us back, if I can, at this point in time to the discussion related to the three different proposals so that we can understand uh, the details or any questions that we might have related to the three presented options. And then subsequently as a committee, we can discuss what we might wish to do, whether there's one option we favor, whether there's uh, a desire for additional uh, means of achieving those results, such as Matt's question. So I'd like to ask uh, uh, committee members if they have questions related to uh, the projects. Uh, I do see that Holly has her hand raised. I'd like to call on Holly 
uh, briefly, given the uh, question that Matt raised. Okay, so in regards to Matt's question, um, at this time, there are no available funds. We have spent all of our available funds through the uh, FY25 process. There, we, I mean, we certainly could look to change um, with a debt authorization, but there is no available cash funds at this time. I don't think that the town and the regional school district at this point is looking for additional funds. I think all they're looking for is for us to lift the restrictions so that they can proceed with what is the best available option. Um, at this time, they are not asking for additional funds, and I think it would be premature for us to to go there until that is something that they're looking for. Um, so uh, I guess I'll just leave it at that. Right now, we're not looking for any additional funds. We're just looking to lift the restriction so that they can do um, what they see um, best at this point. Well, thank you, Holly. Um... So I'll bring in again to ask if I, I have questions, but I'm seeking to allow all committee members to speak. Uh, if there are additional questions uh, related to the different options that were presented uh, by the by Kevin, um, if you have questions, raise your hand. I'm not seeing or comments for that matter. I'm not seeing hands, so I'm going to go ahead and ask a few questions of Kevin, but certainly committee members, please uh, chime in and or raise your hand. It's an important discussion and it's helpful to other committee members as well. We may have the same questions you have. So uh, Kevin, I, I did read the three uh, proposals and thank you for the details that were included. I found it very informative. Uh, I made notes to myself on a few different things. One question that came to my mind was, there's a reference to a contingency and an yep. inflation amount. Uh, the inflation was set based on the percentage of, uh, you know, 5%. I assume that's one year's time between now and when it commences. The contingency uh, also was a function, 15%. Uh, and that's what I have a question about. Uh, yep. In your experience, how often are the contingencies do they actually come into play? It's a large amount. It's five hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars. I recognize the need uh, for planning appropriately because uh, you never know what's going to shake out. But in your experience, yep. how often question. do contingencies come in, and at what percentage might they come in? I understand that anything can happen, but what's your general sense? Yeah, so just a little background. When we first presented the 11 concepts to the school committee, um, we were using aerial mapping, uh, GIS available online, uh, topography. Uh, we actually carried a 20% contingency. Once we updated our plans and started using real survey and our field investigation data, uh, we lowered it down to 15. Uh, at the, upon completion of preliminary design, we're going to be down at a 10% contingency. So each round of developing the plans, we're going to sharpen our pencils, we're going to revisit the estimates. Um, and we, we our experience is by the time we're at bidding, we want to be around 5% contingency. Um, we feel that's enough money to tackle any unknowns. Um, sometimes we see things in the field once construction starts. And, you know, we, we present options or alternatives, um, you know, or the contractor may identify something. And sometimes we see that contingency tapped into, you know, until you rip the ground open and, and really expose everything, you just don't know what you might find. So we never want to go into a project with zero contingency and have no money to tackle unknowns or, you know, potential change orders that might be uh, unavoidable. Um, so that contingency number will come down, but again, we definitely don't want to be below 5% for a public bid job such as this. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, so we have met, known that going through that, um, that we do have a healthy contingency, uh, excuse me, contingency at this point. Um, but that number will come down and hopefully, you know, the escalation number is a little higher and something we probably wouldn't have carried five years ago. But with the unknowns of the economy, 
still going on. Um, estimating has been a little unpredictable and difficult, I would say, from the consulting world uh, the past couple of years due to the pandemic and everything else going on. Um, but again, that number will come down. <clears throat> and the overall project number might come down too. But at this point, these are the numbers that we feel comfortable uh, with. Uh, and a decision needs to be made to tell us which one to advance so we can okay. bring this project towards construction. Uh, thank you. Um, and I, I have a follow-up question. As I looked at the projects, particularly project uh, proposal 3C, I was trying to contemplate how that number might come down and or be phased in, similar to what Doug uh, raised the question. And another item, aside from contingency, that came to my mind was I noticed the lighting poles are more expensive, 500,000 approximately in option 3C, whereas it's a lesser expense because of existing poles in the original version, uh, the, the options 1B and 1D. Uh, I'm curious, uh, was any consideration given or might it be possible for one of two things to occur? One would be to move some of the existing poles into the new option 3C, so that they would have maybe not the best, but similar setups to the original one. And or um, can the lighting be phased? Yeah. Uh, I mean, way back when, when I played on the field, there were no lights. The games were always in the afternoon. Great benefits of lights. Kids love playing yeah. in the uh, in the evenings. But, you know, is that something that is an aspect of potential phasing? Uh, and similarly, are there other items in the proposed option 3C that might be eligible for phasing? Uh, for phasing? I heard you reference the, I believe, the lighting fixtures or and also the sidewalks. Does any other come to mind? So two questions. Yeah, so to answer the first one, uh, relocating the poles, that was a question asked to the actual manufacturer of the existing poles. And because of changes in building code and wind load, <clears throat> we can't relocate them. They would not be up to code anymore. We can retrofit them. We can modify them in their current location, but we cannot pick them up and put them on new foundations because the pole design just isn't up to code. Um, <clears throat> and then to part two, yes, we definitely talked about just putting in infrastructure, um, You know, whether it's just conduits, empty conduits and pole boxes, while the grounds opened up, whether we just put in the concrete foundations, um, which is a much smaller cost than the actual light poles and the fixtures themselves and the controls. Um, so those are two options that we've considered in two different levels of cost. Uh, scaling back the uh, the sidewalk uh, scope, uh, potentially eliminating the concrete bleacher pad. Um, those are all things that are options. Um, the one thing though, I think I mentioned before, if we're say seven hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars deficient, um, I don't think all that combined would get us that difference, um, that delta. But um, it, there's other small things we definitely can look at. Um, we can't get rid. We're not going to get rid of ADA access to the facility. Um, that's just we something that's a necessity. Um, there are probably options. Again, we just haven't quite figured out. $750,000 in phasing options. Thank you. And if I understand the answer to your question, uh, the lights cannot be moved from the old place to the new and the, the capacity to put platforms and not actually install the full set of lights does exist. It would not yeah. prevent the project from going forward. It would just be something that would be desirable to proceed with uh, uh, in the future. If yeah, we, we've done that on numerous projects where we just put in the infrastructure for the poles. And with this type of lighting, it's a pier that sticks out of the ground, a concrete pier that sticks out about six feet. So it's not the most sightly thing, but we've had jobs, uh, projects where those concrete piers are there for five years before light poles arrive to the site. They get funded for, through boosters, through other means, and eventually they, they are there. Thank you. Um, I, I'm going to call on Bob, a parent. I, you've been patiently waiting with your hand up, and I assume it was related to one of the questions that was asked. So I'd like to call on Bob if you have something you'd like to add. 
Certainly, I just wanted to briefly reinforce the point that Kevin made regarding contingency. The approach that Kevin and SLR are taking is industry standard. It's the same approach that that I took in my 30 years of experience with the consulting business and the same approach we're taking, for instance, in the Fort River School Project and Jones Library Projects in that you start with a higher number when there's more uncertainty and that number shrinks as you move closer and closer to the design phase. So there, you know, there may be some opportunities of reallocating some of that contingency and or reducing the contingency as we move forward on this project. Uh, thank you, Bob. I appreciate you uh, sharing that with us. And certainly uh, we're directing questions to Kevin, but certainly, certainly raise your hand Certainly raise your hand if there are uh, other aspects you'd like to add. I'm gonna call on Michelle. Thanks, Sam. So we're being asked to rescind the orientation based kind of in the framework of these three options. Um, not redoing the drainage is, is I think a no-go, but why can't we think about the third option, which is now 3D without the additional field, You know, remove the bleacher pad, phase the lighting, I mean, I mean, is there a way we can draw on those other eight missing versions that I have not seen admittedly um, to talk about reorienting the field? Because it would be consistent with the long-term vision. Frankly, it would. we're getting this fancy eight lane track and to keep this east-west orientation seems kind of ridiculous to me and unfair to everyone playing on the field versus track. So can we talk about ways to have that reorientation? And like Sam said, we didn't always have lighting. Do we need the lighting right away? So I would just be interested in hearing other options for that. Thanks. Thank you, Michelle. Um, Tim. Oh, sure. Um, part of my consideration in all these CPA projects is the... Uh, funding for the greater good and the community. Uh, we've talked about the high school track program, the high school athletics on the fields. I frankly don't recall how much the overall community uses or will use those fields. And then is there a benefit for the overall community, not just the high school students, but the overall community with a north-south orientation versus a east-west orientation or mm -hmm. any of those three. Who's the question directed to? I don't know, <laughs> uh, whoever's the presenters, but. Any comments from any of you or response regarding Tim's inquiry? I see two hands up. I see uh, Bob and Dave, so I'm gonna call on Bob. Um, yeah, ju just a general oh. comment, and I'm not addressing, I'm, I'm sorry, the other Bob? The other Bob, yes. Okay. Yep. First, I, I'll get to you, though, Bob. Sorry, okay. I didn't take my hand down if you're referring to this oh, Bob. Okay. So, uh, Dave Zomack, your hand was up. I assume it was in relation to uh, either Michelle or Tim's comment. Um, yes, yes and no, I, I guess. Um, I'm trying to to kind of get my head around and and where where we are and and why we're here and and I keep coming back to as much as I appreciate and and I think the questions and the the exploration of the three options before us and the overall budget is helpful um I still think the fundamental reason we're here is to consider whether CPAC would rescind or remove the two restrictions that they placed on the project some time ago and allow the team, the council, the school committee to work on the, the bigger picture of, you know, what can the community support? The $1.7 million option, the $3.4 million option, or the $4.2 million option. Um, and so you could take multiple motions tonight. You could have a motion to do something with those restrictions. I'm not presupposing what those are what that would be, but you could also take another motion uh, or another vote 
uh, may, somebody could make a motion to emphasize your support for one of the options before you. But I don't think tonight the ultimate goal is to figure out how to how to fund or change the project uh, for the third option, 3C, to, um, to get it within the available money. So I'm stumbling a little bit with this, but so I, I think the key point is about the restrictions. And then if you'd like to voice your support for a particular option, be it perhaps 3C in the North-South orientation, to make that known to the council and the regional school committee, Ultimately, I think the funding falls back to the council and the regional school committee, and they may recommend that staff come back to you in the fall to help reach that $4.2 million um, uh, goal if North-South orientation and 3C is the, is the chosen, uh, uh, the preferred and supported option. Is that clear? I know it. I kind uh, of thank you, Dave, for uh, sharing your perspective and thoughts on this. Um, Bob or Kevin, do either of you have a response or awareness or general indication of the distinction of community benefit of North-South versus East-West, which was the question Tim raised? I'm not sure that you would or not, but if you do. Yeah, you from my perspective, we've been looking at this for athletics for the high school. Um, of course, we always acknowledge that a track in, and playing fields is in a public setting is very beneficial for the local community. Uh, I think, you know, local public walking on a track or playing in the field, uh, that's not really where we focus our design. Um, and again, we when we were uh, brought on board, we were tasked with, uh, it, you know, not reinventing, uh, not not being stuck to Weston and Samson's original plans, but um, also kind of reevaluating them and seeing if they made sense. And, and Weston Samson's a very reputable firm, and uh, we see them as peers. And you know, we would have if we had we been at the beginning, we would have presented these same options as well. But again, we're looking at it from the high school athletics point of view. Thank you, um, Kevin. So I'd like to just uh, you know make a comment for the committee members. Again, we're seeking to discuss the proposals that were presented uh, by Kevin, uh, three different options, and any questions that you might have related to those proposals regarding understanding and or finance you know, elements of it and phasing. I think it's appropriate to ask those questions at this point of our uh, discussions, if desired. So uh, we can talk thereafter regarding how we may wish to proceed uh, based on the referral that's come before us. Uh, Bob Saul. Uh, it, it's just for my edification, and I think Dave um, answered this, I'm, I'm not sure why we're opining on the specifics of the design features at this particular meeting. Maybe there's some legacy of doing that in the previous uh, uh, restrictions, but it to me, it seems like we're trying to just consider removing these restrictions. Uh, thank you, Bob. That is the primary uh, reason for the meeting is moving in the restrictions. Uh, it's my belief, uh, which is why I'm entertaining the discussion that uh, the information related to questions on these are significant in terms of how committee members might choose to vote relating to the removal of restrictions. That is to say, what might those implications be, uh, which is, I, I can only speak for myself. That's why I'm asking questions, because I wish to have uh, an informed uh, uh, knowledge base as, I, as we come to the questions of whether what we may or may not wish to restrict or remove. Um, Michelle, I believe your hand is up next. I'm not sure, so sorry if I cut anyone, but I just wanted to comment on Tim's question about greater good. And I would just like to say that I think that public school athletics you know, is the greater good of our community. Just that's that's it. Like that's the heart of our community is our public schools and everybody comes together for that. I'm here talking to you about that. Like that's the heart of it. Um, per Dave's second motion, 
Um, you sort of put that in the context of 3C. So I am in favor of the north-south orientation for the reasons I said, but not necessarily in favor of 3C. So if we can take it out of the explicit options in front of us, I think I would think about that or talk about that differently. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Michelle. Uh, Doug? Yeah. Um, I'm not going in order. Forgive me. I'm trying to go in the order I saw the hands. So go ahead. Okay. Um, so uh, there was some talk about the contingency and all the uh, discussion centered around what I would call a design contingency that reduces as the design gets fleshed out. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if there's also an owner's contingency that is generally carried uh, into construction uh, and, and where, where that fits in this picture. Because I, I couldn't really separate it out in some of the estimates in the, in the uh, presentation. And then I guess the other uh, question I was gonna ask was if, if we agree to eliminate the restriction on the artificial turf, but do not release the restriction on the north-south orientation, uh, is it correct, Dave and Kevin, that the team would then focus more clearly on how you how you can what steps you would take now uh, and how you would uh, get to the north south orientation within the budget that you end up having. Thank you. So two different questions there. One was regarding an owner's contingency. Uh, and a second one is uh, if the outcome was a removal of a turf restriction, but not the option 3C, does the team uh, have the capacity, I'll phrase it this way, Doug, to focus uh, further on options three in those conditions? Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll start. Um, so the contingency right now, the way we see it, it's both the construction and the design contingency. Um, so as we get to the final design bid documents uh, and we get down to that 5%, that 5% carries over as the construction or owner's contingency. So, you know, a couple hundred thousand is there for the unknown during construction. Um, and then for the design, it would be up to the school to direct us uh, we have gone through different scenarios, uh, lesser cost scenarios and more expensive ones um, for the reorientation. Um, we would have to be given direction that, okay, let's look at, you know, a uh, six lane oval and eight lane straight, um, you know, lose some of the track area, um, you know, eliminate the lights or put the lights in some sort of phasing package. Um, we can definitely revisit it in if a dollar value uh, not to exceed amount is given to us, we can present, well, this is what we believe you can get. Um, but that is not the direction we've received to this point. We've just given a wide range from 1.7 to, I think at one point with synthetic turf, we were up over 5 million. Um, and this is what we've narrowed it down to at this time. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Katie, you've been very patient. And if I skipped over the order, forgive me, I didn't intend to. That's okay, Sam. I, I appreciate it. And um, I I don't have specific questions, um, but if you wouldn't mind, just I have a couple of comments um, regarding this. I really appreciate Kevin's presentation. And I spent a lot of time um, reviewing all the materials you sent and listening to the school uh, committee meeting and the uh, town council meeting. And I feel very confident in um, allowing, I do feel very confident that all of the folks who are trying to make this decision are in favor of saving money and in favor of a north-south orientation and are going to do everything they possibly can to combine those two things in whatever decision is made. However, um, the result might be that it can't be north-south based on what funding they can get from um, donations, et cetera. So I feel 
I'm ready to call the question and to um, have a vote around removing that restriction. And I feel confident in allowing the folks who are doing this, um, they're trying very hard. As Dave said, it's been years in the making. And I think that um, in the end, the best decision will be made to save the most amount of money and to get the North-South orientation if we can do that. Um, and I don't think keeping a restriction on there is going to leverage anything. That's what we thought when we voted on it. We actually, I think, I'll just bring that, you know, from my experience in that vote, it was we thought if we said it had to be North-South orientation, that would motivate more fundraising and a different approach and more money from the town in order to meet that need. And I'm just not, I don't believe that that is valid point anymore. And I'm willing to make, um, to take that restriction off. And I'm happy to make a motion. I know, Sam, I'm jumping up and I know you want everyone to have a chance to ask the question. So, um, you know, I will try and be patient, but I just, I'm happy to, to make that motion if everyone else is ready. Thank you, Katie. Uh, Doug. Yeah, uh, Sam, I just wanted to tell you that there's this uh, Amherst Regional School Committee chairwoman who has her hand up and uh, has been waiting to contribute some information for a while and would like to a chance to do that. Uh, thank you for calling attention to that. I did not uh, see the participant list. I'd be glad to uh, invite. I see Sarah Marshall is uh, attending. Uh, she's chair of this school committee, I believe. Uh, Sarah, if you can hear me, uh, I'd like to invite you to uh, say something if you wish. Thank you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, thanks very much. And th <laughs> thank you, Doug. <laughs> um, uh, first of all, I chair the Amherst School Committee, not the Regional School Committee. I am just a member of the Regional School Committee that has made this request to you. And I have not been delegated, delegated to speak on the committee's behalf, but I can tell you what, what we have done and um, is in the public record. We have made a request to council that they award us an additional 750, whatever it is, thousand dollars that would allow us to reach the funds necessary to reorient the track. You know, I think I myself, I would be thrilled. I hope they can do that, but it may not be possible. Money is very tight, as as we all know. So maybe it will be possible, maybe it won't. We we are giving them the option of um, making that happen. But if it doesn't happen, um, I think it is safe for me to say the committee wants to proceed. It has been many years um, and it's, it's, um, it's terrible for our student athletes that, they, that our facility is so deterior deteriorated. So if we don't have the money to reorient the track, we will go ahead and um, rebuild it in place. But if council, um, but we will only be able to make the best possible track and field in place if you remove the restriction on the funds, okay? Mm -hmm. But if you remove the restriction and council awards the extra money, then yes, I, I think our intention is to proceed with reorienting the track. So um, just know that we're trying to, we're trying to make that happen. <laughs> and that decision is up to council. Um, but this will just give us flexibility if that additional funding does not come through. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate your uh, chiming in with your uh, information and thoughts. Doug, your hand is still up. Is you're also so. Um, we've heard from the presenters regarding the proposals. We've had a number of questions. Um, I'm going to say a few comments. I, I, I recognize it's a long meeting, but this is an important subject and it has been for some time. Uh, and I think it's uh, all the discussion so far has been quite beneficial. Um, we do have a request for two different, uh, you know, whether or not we will remove restrictions. And there are two distinct ones that Dave pointed out at the start. One is a turf and another the artificial turf, the other is the orientation. I do want to uh, make a comment related to the meeting that took place in, in June of 2022, 
where three other committee members were present. At that time, our discussion was very clear regarding awarding funds for the purposes of reorientation. Um, and the reason being is a variety of uh, uh, many former athletes, myself included, having played soccer field on the field, recognize the advantage or disadvantage of the sun coming in one's eyes. And at that time, there was not interest in funding the program or the proposal if there was not orientation, <laughs> reorientation. This was at that time. So uh, from my perspective, I recognize that it's a generational opportunity and whatever the outcome is that the town and the school committee arrives at, assuming that there's work done on the track and field, it's going to be in that place for 30 to 40 years. Uh, I recognize the importance of athletics to the community and to the athletes and the students as well. Uh, I remain very much in favor of anything that the committee could do. This is my personal opinion uh, to achieve the original vision of the master plan and improving the track and field and reorienting the field in a north-south <laughs> manner that would achieve the original objectives uh, that it sounds like many of us share. Uh, in that regard, what I'm hearing is that the financing is uncertain. I think it's unfortunate that uh, financing hasn't been fully explored before a decision has been presented to us uh, a request presented to us to make a decision when we don't really know entirely what the financing will be. It sounds as though the town may not come up with funding, but my understanding is that as a committee, we do have the capacity to recommend additional debt to achieve the objective, which would be po potential objective if it were desired to reorient. Uh, Matt had raised that question, and although it's not our uh, it was not the referral. It is something that might be a long-term resolution to achieving the goal. So I'm not, uh, you know, I think we need to talk about two different items. One is removing the turf field, uh, and the other is whether or not we wish to remove the reorientation uh, re requirement. Uh, I'd like to for someone to make a motion related to the turf aspect of the field so we can uh, get that out of the way. Uh, and my own belief on it is that, you know, part of the process of being a community is there's a lot of different uh, inputs. I was a very, very strong advocate being a soccer player, coach and player of having turf field. Uh, I spoke up in numerous meetings because I know personally the difference that it makes for uh, the athletes in the town. It's unequivocal in my opinion, but it seems we're not going to achieve that or we would have to achieve that with great conflict. And part of being in a committee and part of a community is sometimes you have to know when to step back and recognize the, the situation and make accommodations. So would anyone, that's my preamble, would anyone like to make a motion regarding removing the restriction of the uh, turf, artificial turf requirement of the award from 2002? So moved. Is there a second? Second. <clears throat> Is there discussion? Uh, anyone wish to say anything? The The motion on the floor is to remove the uh, artificial turf requirement restriction affiliated with the $800,000 award from uh, originally recommended June 2nd, 2022. Uh, Matt King. Uh, I, I think we can just say we reduce, we, we, we sorry, we, we remove any um, option based restriction because I don't think it, the actual motion in this the original CPA didn't mention turf it only mentioned option 3c or 3 sorry so all we need to do is make a motion to remove any project specific restriction on the eight hundred thousand dollar appropriation 
that could be done as, as a single motion. But doesn't that include two of the? It does. Okay. That... Oh, so, oh, so some people might want to vote differently on each one. Is mm -hmm. that is that your point? Correct. Oh, I see. Correct. Um, th there is there are two aspects of it, and I see a difference. Okay, I, I I understand. If if people want to vote differently on those two different aspects, then I understand why you would do it as two different options, two different motions. Is there additional discussion? So there's a motion on the floor to remove the artificial turf restriction requirement that's affiliated with the award, uh, the proposal award from June 2nd of 2022. Uh, I'd like to have a roll call vote. Um, Tim. Aye. Matt. Aye. David. Aye. Uh, Michelle. Aye. Bob. Bob Saul, cannot hear you. You're on mute. Uh, I'll come back to you, Bob Saul. You're on mute. Hi, hi. Sorry, Sam. Uh, Katie. Hi. Doug. Hi. Robin. Hi. Uh, and I'll vote aye as well. So the motion passes nine to zero. Uh, the other item for consideration that we've all been talking about is the north-south orientation. Uh, you know, perhaps we can share our thoughts on that prior to making a motion uh, one way or the other. Uh, would anyone like to say any comments related to uh, removing a restriction or not related to a north-south orientation? Uh, Matt? Yeah, I pretty much agree with what Katie said earlier that, um, and I think this is also what Dave is sort of implying, is that the, the, the committees that are actually working on the details of this, the school committee um, and the, the school administration, et cetera, all basically want to have the north-south orientation if possible. And um, I'm confident that they will do what they can given the funding that they have available to make that happen. So I'm, I agree with what Katie said, and I don't think we need to make a restriction here. Michelle. I agree with Matt, per Katie and Dave, but I also see like given the three options presented to us tonight that we have about probably a 75% chance of them not going with the north-south orientation. So if we do go with this rescinding it, I would like to offer a second motion or whatever is appropriate to strongly say at least for me, and I would offer this, that um, we'd like to see a reorientation of it, but I don't think what we need to be the hand that tries to move that. <clears throat> Any other hands raised uh, on this subject? Tim. Yes, that's exactly what my feeling was, Michelle. So I am going to make a motion. I'm going to move that we remove the restriction on the north south and instead recommend that the restriction be removed. However, the committee strongly recommends that a north south option be uh, considered by the town officials. We, we'll have that. A, we have a motion and a second. I will second that motion. And a third. <laughs> um, is there a discussion? Uh, Doug. Yeah, I think uh, the word considered is probably too weak. Uh, I think leader, you know, the committees have already considered that. Uh, and I, th I think that we should urge that it be implemented uh, as a north-south option uh, to the extent that funds allow. Okay, well, I'll, I'll amend it to say, I move that uh, we uh, remove the restriction on North-South and instead strongly recommend that the North-South orientation be the chosen option. Or the, we, we strongly recommend a North-South orientation for this project. 
we I, I could remove the word consider, but the intent is to have this committee strongly recommend that that be the uh, intent of the uh, of, of our funding require our funding um, recommendation. So procedurally, we have an original motion, and oh, we, sorry. Have, <laughs> we have a, an amendment to that motion. If I understand correctly, we have to vote on this amendment to the motion. Somebody please chime in if I've got this wrong. That's, that's Roberts, yeah. I, I don't know if we need a second on that amendment to the motion. Uh, go ahead, Dave. Yeah, I think if the original if Tim is willing to accept a friendly amendment from Doug. Okay. I, I so, think that is allowable. So I am it's, willing it's, to be friendly. So, so as long as the person who seconded, um, as long as the person who seconded agrees with the amendment, then it can move forward into one vote. Correct. The person who seconded it was. I, I agree I, with the amendment. I also <laughs> Michelle. Okay. So uh, we're back to further discussion relating to an original motion that has a friendly amendment. Um, I'm going to make a comment, which is I share the concerns that were raised by Michelle and Doug in that uh, it seems to me that if the restriction is removed related to the award, uh, that there's a strong possibility uh, that the um, outcome will be a improved improvement of the and a proposal which redoes the track in place. Uh, I it would be a last resort from my perspective to seek to have an improvement to the track in place, such as 1D, uh, just because I recognize the generational aspect of this. Once the track is done, it is done in whatever fixation it might be. And I understand what's gone into this. I understand the amount of work that the town has occurred, but I do, have issue with the fact that we're being in a situation to make a decision uh, without the financing having been discussed in advance. It, it seems a bit um, done for convenience for the purposes of uh, trying to proceed with a project on a timely basis as opposed to what the actual outcome or end game might be. Uh, I would like to see the committee, uh, if uh, uh, support a long-term reorientation, and I'm not convinced that removing the restriction leads to that. It places the decision for the funds in the town and or school committees, but perhaps the committee itself can do something such as seeking to add debt to meet that differential. We know that there's the capacity to phase aspects of this project if we were to go with option 3C or, or option three. And we also know that the committee has the capacity to vote and recommend funds, which would put the recommendation to the town council, here's what we would like to do and we're willing to meet that gap of funding. I don't know if that's what our committee wishes to do, but I don't know because we're doing this now, as opposed to next fall when proposals might come in, we don't know. So um, that's where my mindset's at. I, I have a strong belief in the reorientation and would like to, from my perspective, uh, achieve that. I've heard from most of our committee members that I, let me rephrase that. I've not heard from any committee member that they're not interested in reorienting the uh, track. I could be wrong. And if so, please, please speak up if financing is the key element. But I have concerns that we might prevent, we might lead to the, that option not occurring if we remove that restriction without simultaneously offering a solution of funding. Uh, Matt, 
Yeah, just going back to the discussion about whether the, the CPA committee could be um, a solution to the funding gap to get from 1D to 3C, um, I guess the feeling from Dave and Holly is that we can't do anything about that tonight, but um, uh, I, for one, would like to see the town consider the CPA as a potential option there. I believe we can do it. It's just, it's not our task at hand. We can make it. Well, well I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what's possible to do with altering. I mean, we, we, we're we altering a CPA recommendation from two years ago by removing a restriction. Can we also alter it by changing the amount? I don't know. Not sure why we couldn't, if the committee wanted to. I mean, given that it's debt finance, it's not based on a, a, a balance at hand. No, it's, got, it's not cash, but I don't know if the committee wants to do that or not, but it seems to me that that could be a recommendation that's included, which provides the strong solution desired and a means of achieving it if necessary. But we don't know at present what all of our committee members think on these issues because we've been talking about the proposals. Uh, so I don't know how strongly our committee members feel about seeking to ensure a north-south orientation or not. Uh, I know how I feel. I think I know how a few people feel. I don't know how everyone feels. On that, Dave has his hand up. Uh, okay. Uh, Dave, do you have? Yeah, I think I, I, I referenced this earlier. Um, I certainly think that the body could take a vote to um, you know, send a message to the council that the CPAC is open to considering additional fundings to achieve the uh, 3C option, the $4.2 million option north-south orientation. However, um, I, I, as much as it pains me, I think, uh, think process-wise, you don't have a proposal. I, I, Going back to your process, you have a community process that is followed every year. That process includes an applicant applying for X, funding for something in one of the four categories. You don't have that proposal before you. Uh, there needs to be a public hearing on the 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 application. So, I, I think from a process standpoint. Um, I, I, I do believe the town or the school would need to come, or the schools or uh, in partnership would need to come back to you in the fall, which might very well be a, a, a workable timeline. So I, I think you could send a message to council about your preference for the north-south orientation, but I, I certainly couldn't advise perhaps oh. Holly, you know, disagrees or agrees with me on this, but I think process-wise, you you really do need to have an applicant, an application, and a justification in writing and go through the, the normal process. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Dave. I'm not, I have to admit, I'm not certain regarding how that works, but you know, there's more experience in your and Holly's uh, knowledge base than in mine uh, relating to these issues. Uh, but if, if we were not to discuss such an option, I guess the subsequent question arises is what would be if if the committee actually wished to proceed in that regard, do we why is the urgency of now? In other words, why does the decision have to be made now as opposed to in the next cycle if that's a strong desire? I'm just speaking aloud to the committee. And that's what goes on in my head. And that's what I wrestle with relating to whether or not to remove a restriction, because I think it uh, leads to a high possibility of a decision for a non-reoriented field without the CEPA having any further input. Uh, Katie. Um, well, Sam, I, I appreciate, I really appreciate this creative thinking. <laughs> um, and I also think that um, 
I just I do disagree with this idea that it if we take the restriction off that there's a strong likelihood that it won't get the, that north south orientation because I think everybody I mean Sarah spoke up Sarah Marshall spoke up about their request for more funding from the town and my experience on this committee is the town is not shy coming to CPA with a request for funding um and it feels like there may be um you know a possibility of the funding coming through and being figured out without us which would be great um i don't i feel very having you know reviewed all those videos and you know of the meetings people really want that north south and they have for the the whole time as you mentioned i mean the students speaking up in 2022 and i just i don't think i think we can let the town know that we're you know that we would be willing to entertain this to support this and we strongly urge them to select the north south orientation and i think they're going to do everything in their power to get that done um so i i would call the question here um there's no motion to call at present um I, I would like to let the other committee members who have not spoken on this subject. Um, oh, is there a motion? There is a motion, isn't there? Uh, yes, there forgive is. Forgive me. Uh, so when a question is called, what is the procedure? We take a vote whether to proceed or must we vote immediately? I believe we have to vote to see if we wish to end discussion. Um, I do see a few members who have hands up who have not yet spoken. So do we wish to end discussion at this moment or do we wish to allow other members who have hands up to speak? That is the motion before us. Uh, I wish to, uh, I vote no against calling the question at this moment because I see two committee members with hands up. Who's next? Uh, Matt Kane. I'm totally confused. There's the question has been called, which means to end discussion, my understanding on the motion before us, the motion that- Why would we end discussion? Because Katie has called the question. Right. I'm pushing the envelope, Matt. It's, it's. I mean, I'm fine with, I'm fine with other people. Like we can vote on it now that I've called it. This, I'm being a pain in the neck and I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm happy to have other people, but I, you know, I do you, think we need to move forward on the motion that was- You wish to withdraw us. the calling of the question? Holly, well, shake your head that you can't. Uh, uh, I, I'm not going to withdraw it, no. But question, people, yeah. I just wanted to explain to Matt where I'm coming okay. from. The question has been called. So as a committee, we must vote to either end discussion or allow discussion to continue. That is what we must do at this moment. I am voting no. I do not wish to end discussion at this moment. I'm calling on other members to their vote to either end discussion which would be a yes vote, or to allow continued discussion, which would be a no vote. Uh, okay. So, Matt, you, I, I'll I, allow continued discussion. So, I'll vote no. Okay. Uh, Tim. Well, since I was the one who made the original motion, I was going to withdraw the motion. And I think I can do that, which means we have further discussion. Are you withdrawing yeah. the motion? I am withdrawing the my motion to to move ahead with the restriction and instead use phrasing highly recommend. I'm withdrawing that because I think we need further discussion and I have been convinced yeah. through the conversation. So as the original, uh, I am withdrawing my proposal. Forgive my uh, ignorance regarding Robert's rules of orders. We have a motion works. to withdraw within the middle of a calling of the question. <laughs> well, I was trying to do it at the time. That's all right. Do committee members mind if we accept Tim's withdrawal of the motion? Accept and withdraw second. Okay. Uh, so once withdrawn, I'm going to assume that that's done. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can continue with a discussion. Uh, thank you for bearing with me procedurally on this. I believe we got it correct. So uh, there were some hands up earlier. David Williams, I saw your hand was raised. Yes. I'd like to ask you uh, to uh, share your thoughts with us, if you wish. Uh, I'm just thinking, listening and thinking, but we are discussing a project that um, contractors uh, 
come forth with recommendations. We've been working with the town and the school district. And it was my understanding that there were two concerns, the turf and north-south. And I think, my thinking is, we need to make our recommendation um, for those two issues and the town and contractors will deal with the rest of it. And if there's additional funds that they need, they will make the necessary steps to come back to the CPA or the town, as it was mentioned, the town may find some monies for the school committed to move forward. Not CPA. That's my thinking. Uh, thank you, David. Uh, Doug Marshall? Uh, similar to what David just said, um, my wife handed me a note that says the regional school committee has not yet has not applied to anyone for more funds. So for us to be seriously That's talking terrible. about how we might do that at this point seems premature. Okay, uh, thank you, Doug. Uh, Bob Saul. Um, I just wanted to double down on what uh, Dave Williams said, and I completely agree with all of his points. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Michelle. Um, I appreciate Katie's optimism and everybody's, you know, putting this on the school committee, but I have a hard time seeing the school committee coming up with a couple million dollars for a north-south orientation. Um, and given the timeline presented to us tonight, which was a 2025 breaking ground, that's pretty quick for a new CPA cycle. So I just I have big reservations about if we remove the remove the restriction if it's actually going to happen. So that's big for me. But Sam, and I, but still I'm willing to let it go to the people who are deliberating on this, which is the town. And they already you know it's in their hands. But Sam, do you have a recommendation? We can't we can't up our uh, we can't up our eight hundred thousand dollars. We can make a strong recommendation for the north south, but is is there more we can do? I'm not sure. So, if you, uh, if you had an idea, I'm all ears. That's a good question. Uh, nothing has come to us regarding requesting new funds. Something has coming come to us regarding opening up the discussion of a 2022 fiscal year 23 project. So a request was made to rediscuss this project, which is what we're doing. Um, so uh, the town staff is saying that we, sh we should not recommend additional funds because that would be a uh, new process because it would be more than has been requested. Uh, I share your concerns, Michelle, in that we have been presented with a very short time period and I'm cognizant of the financial uh, dilemma that the town council and the school committees have been in to the point where staff has been uh, put on layoffs and to where many other projects in the town council have not gone forward. And I don't know how quickly the town might come back to the committee, the CPA committee. Uh, given the sense of urgency that's referenced, I think it would be a juxtaposition of the need for a track and field for our athletes versus uh, let's come back to CPA. None of us here can answer that question. I'm not. I'm not confident that 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 someone would come back to CPA to request more funding. I would hope that they would. CPA might move as quickly as they can. I'm curious, is there any member of the committee here, uh, if they had their wherewithal that uh, would not want to see the field, 
the proposal reoriented. We haven't gotten into that. We don't have proposals in front of us, but is there anyone who's not leaning towards something that might achieve an outcome with a reoriented field? I realize that doesn't address the issue at hand, but I'm just curious, does anyone have something to speak against that desired outcome? I raised a question that was required action to speak negatively, so I'm not hearing that. Um, I don't, you know, we don't have to take any action. If we take no action, then where we sit is that we have not removed the restriction of the north-south orientation relating to option three. That I believe that would put the uh, the town council and or school committee in a position where it would delay things and would force them to <clears throat> come up with additional money or not. Do we really want to do that or do we want to give them the flexibility with the hope that they would come, that they would find the financing somehow, whether it's through the town, which we can't say that they'll come up with or not. We know how challenging the budget discussions in the town have been, or that they would come back to CPA. Again, we don't know what our committee would state. So that's where we're at. We can do nothing which would obligate or turn or vote down the rescinding, rescinding of the reorientation that would obligate the school committee and the town council to only consider option three, it would remove their flexibility. Uh, and they've requested flexibility from us. So it sounds as though we can't really vote to authorize an additional funding gap. We can simply make a motion that would request that the town and or school committees look for funding and or come back to CPA. We would like for them to come back to us to seek new funding if the funding can't be found elsewhere. That's a possibility. We, And that's kind of what Tim had said initially. Um, so I realize we're running on here, but it's a significant discussion. Um, that's my answer to the question that you posed, Katie. Uh, excuse me, Michelle. Uh, I don't know how we can proceed other than to vote to rescind or vote to, vote to rescind with a strong recommendation that the town council and school committees find additional money or come back to CPA or not rescind. I think those are our three choices before us. Uh, I see a lot of hands up. I've been talking a lot. Uh, Katie, I think your hand was up first. Definitely not. Everyone else was ahead of me. Okay, then uh, if you'd like, I can call on someone else, but you waited the first to go around. It's up to you. Okay, well, I all I all I wanted to, I appreciated Michelle's um, noticing my optimism because that's maybe a rare thing, but um, I I wanted to clarify that I'm not necessarily optimistic that we'll get the north south because of the cost, but I'm optimistic that that's what folks are really pushing for and they're going to work hard to figure out if there's any possible way to do it and I want to give them the flexibility to get something as Sam said uh completed and, and an improvement um the best way possible. And so that's that's what I'm optimistic that that folks are really going to try their very very hardest to get the north south um if they can and if not i want to give them that flexibility to do something for the next um several generations uh thank you katie uh matt i'm ready to go back to uh tim's amended motion or a similar motion and proceed to a vote okay. uh, robin cannot hear you You're on mute. Okay, there I am. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. I think okay. we should move for the vote, and then if the discussion after a motion should be focused, should simply be focused on why or why not to vote on that particular mo motion. Okay. Um, David, uh, I'm coming back to my earlier 
Satanists, restriction. The it was my understanding that um, we're we are meeting tonight to remove or either approve or leave the restrictions as they are. And uh, I think I think that should be the focus or the vote that we were working. Okay, uh, thank you, David. Uh, Tim. Um, yes, in my mind, it comes down to my personal vote is coming down to, are we going to uh, provide some leverage by maintaining the restriction for the town to move to the north-south option? If we remove it, there's a good possibility that the east-west in place might happen. And I personally don't feel comfortable with that. And I like the fact that we have some leverage uh -huh. with the restriction. Um, secondly, in terms of town financing, I would not support the town coming up with any other monies to help this project along. In fact, I think that's in part what the CPA is all about. We have a recreation component of the funding that's totally outside of the overall town budget. And I think that's something we could use. So the town, in my opinion, would be silly not to, re to ask for more funding in the next cycle for this project by using CPA funds and not, <clears throat> excuse me, and not using any of the other. So I'm not sure who's would like to make a motion or I'd be happy to, but I feel we should maintain the restriction because of that. Um, would you like to make a motion relating to the, oh, excuse me, Robin, go ahead. Oh, I mean, I, was, I, I wrote down a motion that I'm happy to make. Uh, I, was, I moved to rescind the restriction uh, on the north-south orientation with the strong recommendation to pursue the north-south north option and encourage the town to return to CPA for additional funds to meet that north-south objective. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Uh, discussion related to the motion that was made. Uh, Tim, do you have further discussion? Oh, no, no, no. I didn't take my hand bound, but I'm opposed to that. I am in favor of maintaining the, uh, for all the reasons I just gave. Uh, so I'll just wait till I vote, see how other people feel. So um, discussion, so I'll say something. Tim, if I hear you correctly, you wish to retain the leverage to obligate a north-south orientation to obligate if the project's going to proceed to come back to the committee. Uh, the one thing that comes to my mind in relation to that is the timing gap. Uh, in the timing gap, meaning that we it's a one-year cycle. Um, if it's a timing gap that leads to a north-south orientation, perhaps that's a timing gap well utilized. Um, so I share concerns about whether or not there'll be funding arrived at in a timely manner to allow option 3C to proceed. Uh, I share your concerns in that regard because I'm a <clears throat> played on the field, had the sun in the eyes. We use it as a home court advantage, uh, coached all the kids in the school coach of the high school soccer team, heard from all the athletes, a non-north-south orientation is just not something that addresses the needs of the town in a major way. It addresses the track needs. It addresses the track needs, which are significant. But I would hate for a lack of, let's call it 500,000 with some of the removal of items with the... <laughs> staging of the lighting as an example 
I'd hate for lack of $500,000 in a time pressured decision for the generational or perhaps 40 year opportunity for a reoriented, reoriented field to go away. Mm -hmm. And I've seen the dilemma that the town council faces with funding. Uh, I would hope, <clears throat> you know, one other aspect Doug Slaughter didn't come to present is there was no request made of other town regional CPA committees for funding related to this. Originally, no there was about 200 some odd thousand that had been slated for possible funding from the regional CPA committees. They objected because they weren't in favor of the turf fields. We have already voted to recommend removing the turf fields to the town council. Those CPAs are a potential source of money now that the artificial turf field barrier is no longer in existence. Would this project be delayed to allow for that funding to take place? I don't know because we've been presented with a request to arrive at a conclusion before we know what the financing is. I'm raising my thoughts as I consider what's there. And I would, you know, I just think we need to go with the North-South field. I'm not sure what gets us there. And it may be Tim's comment about, we remove the turf field requirement that opens up the door to CPA funds from other towns and other communities. We say, we'd like for you to come back to us for more money. How long does it take to do that? Um, so I, I share Tim's thoughts on this. Uh, other thoughts from anyone on the committee? We have a motion and we have a second. Can we repeat the motion again, Robin, please? Yep, the motion is to rescind the restriction with, uh, with the restriction on the north south oh. orientation with a strong recommenda recommendation to pursue the north south option and encouragement to return to CPA for additional funds to meet the north south objective. Thank you, Robin. Uh, Dave Zomack, I see that your hand is still up. Do you have something to add? Just, yeah, very quickly on timing, Sam. I could be wrong on this, but, you know, we we changed our form of government some years ago to have a more responsive uh, form of government than town meeting and, and select board some years ago. Um, but it strikes me that if a an urgent request came into the CPAC from the schools or and or the town, you know, during the summer months, I I think the CPAC could take up that urgent request based on the timeline of the whole project out of the normal cycle. Again, we'd have to follow all of the, you'd have to follow all of the established, you know, uh, protocol for doing that. But um I'm suggesting that it may not have to wait until, you know, September proposals, October, you know, consideration, November, December, January into that, because we will need to know before then to bid this project. So I'm just suggesting that there, there could be a more urgent request coming to CPAC to reach that goal. And that could be feasible. Um. Would anyone like to add a sense of urgency in the motion? Add the words as soon as possible, if needed. Um, I'm seeing no's. I, I'll move to amend the motion to add the words as soon as possible, if needed. I accept the amendment. All right, one last time, Robin, bear with me. If you can read the full motion with the amended comment. Yeah, I didn't write the amended comment down, but uh, motion to rescind the restriction on the north-south orientation with the strong recommendation to pursue the north-south option and encouragement to return to CPA for additional funds to meet the north-south objective, did we say as soon as possible? Was that, was that the amendment? If needed. If, as, as, as if, needed. If needed. 
<laughs> as needed, as soon as needed. <laughs> ASAP. All right. Take that as soon as possible. So, that is the motion uh, before us. We have a motion before us. I'm not seeing any hands for further discussion. I'll give one last opportunity if someone wishes to speak to the motion. Um, the motion is to remove the restriction from our June 2nd, 2022, relating to North South Field with a strong recommendation or request that the uh, school committee and our council seek to come back to CPA if they can't locate additional funds. That's the essence of it. Uh, without seeing any hands, I'm gonna go ahead and proceed with a roll call vote. Uh, Tim. No. Michelle. Aye. Uh, Matt Kane. Aye. Katie. Aye. Robin. Aye. Doug. Nay. Bob Saul. Aye. So it's four and no, what's the current count? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, David five, to, Williams? five to three right now. David Williams? Aye. And I will vote. Uh, I'll vote no. So the motion passes six to three, is if I added this up correctly. So thank you for bearing with me and for all as we um, discuss this issue. I think we had a good discussion thorough and I think the desire of the committee is heard. Um, <clears throat> we do have a couple other items on the agenda and I think they can go fairly quickly here. I know we're running over a bit uh, and I'm gonna proceed accordingly. Sam, I have to go, I'm sorry. I'm going to put okay. out now that the votes have been done. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Bob. So one item here was a discussion of feedback from the fiscal year 2025 process. Uh, I wanted to do this earlier after we had the application placed back up. It didn't, we don't have anything we can look at. So I just wanted to reach out to the committee because this may be our last meeting prior to next cycle. Um, does anyone have any comments or suggested improvements in the process that we used last year? Last year, we introduced one new thing, which was having just the spreadsheet that Katie had introduced to allow the questions to be completed in a timely manner. As members think about what we went through last year, uh, in previous years, is there any suggestion in terms of how we might approach things or tweak what we did? It's a good time to ask this now because our next meeting may be at the onset of the new cycle. Uh, Tim. Um, I am going to request that, uh, frankly, I'm fried. <laughs> okay. And I don't, I just can, I, I just don't want to spend more time talking about that. Uh, okay. If we have to call a meeting, another meeting, we can. And I think Bob being a relatively new member would be very helpful in that. And he should be part of the process. Okay. So uh, I just, I'm going to request, I, I'm myself okay. fried and just don't feel like discussing anything more tonight if that's okay <laughs> uh, it's heard and will certainly be done okay. if if there's anything that was prominent that came to somebody's uh thoughts regarding last year's cycle i'd be glad to hear it at this point in time uh simply because we don't know how soon members will be uh added we have five different supporting committee members where it has to go through council, which overlaps with the time frame for the application cycle. Uh, if anyone had anything that jumped out at them that they wanted to um, uh, bring up, please uh, feel free to speak, speak now. You certainly can email it as well. Uh, Michelle. I had nothing to comment on, so I'd, I'm just in favor of closing this now rather than tabling it. Yep, okay. Uh, no motion, so we can talk about it at a later time. Um, one other item, Holly, are you still here? 
Yes, I am. Yes. So, Holly, the application uh, sample application and information on the website uh, has been missing since last fall. Um, and I had provided a recreation oh, of the information yeah. for the town. Oh, yeah. uh, it's significant in that potential applicants can't uh, see the information that they need in, as we approach the application cycle. So the question I have is, uh, what would be required to enable that to be recreated and or is there a time frame when we could expect that that would reasonably be accomplished? Um, again, Sam, we can talk about this offline. It is um, it is something that I have to work with our information technology department on to get reactivated. And I do not have a time frame at this moment, but I can discuss that with you. Um, at another time, we have a new person that will be starting shortly and will hopefully relieve some of my burdens and other staff members' burdens and a new communication director coming on board. And I hope to give that project off to um, communication director or the IT department and suspect in the probably within the next 30 days we can get that accomplished, but it's not something I can handle right now. No, that would be fantastic. And I recognize the burden that you face. It's an awful lot of responsibility to also be doing that. So I'm glad to hear someone's coming on. I just wanted to bring it up while we're all here. And it is significant for potential applicants to have that information available on the website. We can talk another time. Uh, and a 30 day time period would be quite good. That would be great. So um, it'll be all well before the next application round. Yeah, yeah, that's that sounds good. Um, um, I don't have any other topics that the chair did not reasonably anticipate 48 hours before the meeting. So again, I'd like to thank all the committee members for uh, sharing their thoughts and participating in this long meeting. Uh, it's an important one. I do wanna remind committee members uh, if their term is expiring, uh, if they're an at-large member, that they should communicate with town staff, uh, specifically, I believe, Andrea and or the town manager, if there's interest in uh, committing to a new term. Uh, and for the committee, so the members, the five members from planning, uh, conservation, recreation, housing and planning that uh, as your committees meet in the new cycle, please raise the item on the agenda to select a liaison for CPA because uh, we have to wait till we have our committee members or we'd like to wait until we have a full committee. So there's a timing element there. Uh, so please uh, bring that to the attention of the chairs of your committees if you're able. Uh, thank you all. and. I'm going to go ahead and then call the meeting to end at 8.28 p.m. I hope you all have a great uh, rest of June and summer, and uh, see you soon. Bye -bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. See you. <clears throat>